In today's video, I finish off fitting the inverter or variable frequency drive. That's fitted into the hole in the cabinet where the 12 volt transformer was for the lamp. I removed that, fitted the inverter. I was hoping to put the rev counter in the same position, but there's not enough space, so I fitted that at the back of the lathe on the wall. So now all that remains is to test it out and see whether it works okay. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. First of all, turn the power off, remove the plug. This is the conduit I fitted to the motor cable. If you remember in the last video, I fitted this bracket onto the motor to hold the cable. And then the cable's gone up this conduit into the lathe. Everything else in here except for the motor is the original Boxford. So if you come up from there, above that, this hole was already there and this is where the old forward reverse switch was fitted. That used to be on there for the old motor. That's been removed. I've just put the screws back in the hole to fill the holes and I might need them at a later date. This cable is the new remote control cable which goes into the cabinet, into the conduit and then I've fed it across into the old switch. The remote control I've made a bracket that fits on the back to hold the remote and I've altered the remote in that it used to come out, the cable used to come out the bottom but I don't want to hold this, I want to put it down on the line somewhere and obviously with regards to the emergency stop it's important you know where that is, at least I know where it is when it's fixed. I've made a little piece on the back and screwed it to the piece of aluminium with the remote I was wondering where I could put this I was going to make a bracket and fit it down here screw it to the top there but then I thought well I noticed the bolt on the bottom of the bed this one here so I've just made a piece of aluminium that's at an angle with a gap at the back and the hook on the end there just fits into there. This is how the the bracket works. I'm hoping that it'll slowly bend down and touch the top of that the edge of this cabinet. But it just slides behind the bracket under there. It keeps it in the same position so it's easy to control. This is a little better than the old one in that the fact that I don't have to bend down to the switch which was here. This is above now. I'm going to switch it on and off and I've got the speed control. This is the original switch gear for the Boxford. Uh, switch on, off and this light we added some years ago. I've repaired it. The, the bulb had gone. I've just replaced the bulb. So what happens when the power's on like now, it's on at the wall. So if I press on the on button, that sends the power through to the inverter. And if I press the stop button, that will stop the power to the inverter. It no longer links to these micro switches on the door and on the gearbox. All it does is turn the power when I press this from the switch to the inverter or variable frequency drive as it's sometimes known as. I'm still working on the machine at the moment so this is not finalised but the switch is finished. The power's off and it's unplugged. 
So I'll show you what's in here. The black cable at the back goes to the pendant and the grey cable at the front which is here bent down comes across to this side goes to the motor the other wires that have been added are the pink wire which is the loop to the micro switches which I took off the back of the original switch and now that's controlled by the inverter so if I open the door and the inverter's running the inverter will switch off I didn't want to leave it connected to the main switch because that means the inverter wouldn't switch itself off the main switch would switch the inverter off and I thought it might be quicker if the inverter switches it off rather than power down from the main switch so the inverter switches off if you open the door to the belts the gearbox cover on the side or you change the back gear so if I change any of those while the motor's running it will switch itself off the other cables in there the red and the yellow go to the electric light which originally was a 12 volt bulb with a big transformer now it's an LED lamp with a small transformer the green at the back here which I've fitted is another earth wire the whole cabinet is earthed but on the inverter it wanted an earth wire so I've taken off the cabinet checked the continuity that it's okay and that will earth out the inverter next to the on off switch is the inverter and for what I've got on here is the plastic cover over the front I've got the switch here for the lamp the wire that's hanging down in there there's two wires will go on the back of this switch I've only put it on temporary the plastic cover has some holes in the top and the bottom for ventilation there's also holes in the back of the unit and holes on the bottom of the unit so that when the fan comes on in the inverter you can suck air in at the back on this side stuck to the back of the box is a small transformer and all that does is power the work lamp on the lathe and that's what the switch is for so if I press the start button you'll see the inverter come on it's just come on and that's powered up ready to go if I press the stop button it takes about five seconds for the power to stop and then the inverter will say power off and what I do is press the start button the inverter's ready and then on the control pad I press the start button the spindle's going around with the chuck and you can see them I think that's showing you the revolutions of the motor not the chuck that is a lot quieter than the original motor. At the moment it's running on the lowest pulley in the system. The motor's doing 1,500 revs but I'm getting a speed of about two or 300. I press the stop button. It takes a few seconds to slow down. If I press the start button, it takes about five seconds. That's programmed into it. I will alter that to see if I can get it to go faster. The moment the chuck's running, if I open the door, stopped. Close the door. Then you have to press the start button on the control pad. And it will go back to the speed it was set to. Now I've removed the front cover so you can see the wiring inside. The back on the left you can see the transformer which just works the LED work lamp. This has a cover on and take off. The wiring on the top row there is for the remote control. 
And underneath this, there are another row of wires. There's a bottom row underneath. And that's for the power and the earth wire. As I say, there's two leads here, and they just work the light. I'll just mention the pink wire here. That controls the door switches and on the inverter it's 24 volt whereas on the old switch I think it was 240 volt. I'm just going to test the motor now. I've set it to the middle pulley where I'm hoping I can leave it until I need either a very slow speed or a very fast speed. I've fixed my four jaw chuck to the spindle because this is the biggest chuck I have and there's quite a lot of mass there to turn and I'm just wondering if the inverter will deal with that. So now if I start button, I'll turn it up to halfway. Seems to be handling that, switch it from forward to reverse. I've changed the speed, acceleration time and deceleration times to three seconds. So when I click it over to from reverse to forward, it should take three seconds to stop and three seconds to speed up. Just a word of safety, make sure your chuck's on tight if it's a screw thread, just so when you do put it in reverse, it's not going to unscrew itself. You have some options here on this side, volts, amps, RPM and hertz. By pressing the shift key you can switch to hertz and it will display Pressing it again, go to volts, display the volts. Press it again, give you the amps. Press it again, it will give me the RPM. That's full speed. Twenty seven revs per minute. I've taken the four jaw chuck off and replaced that with a three jaw. And I've connected the wires to the light switch in the front panel. Okay, that's the front panel replaced. And everything's finished on there. We'll just have a look at the top. Switch the light on on the panel below. Well, that works okay. I've also connected my rev counter to the wall here. So you can see the actual revs off the chuck. If I just switch it on, so that's on the middle pulley on the plate it says that, that speed should be 540 you see I'm getting 555 and from that I can go right the way down to the 46 RPM. 
turn it back up again. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope that was useful, and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.